So the traditional model as far as the role of a director on a commercial is that once you've won the job, you know, you've gone, done the treatment, the bidding, all that stuff. Once you've won the job, basically uh, you, you go through the process just like any other film of pre-production and the shooting. And then you're usually involved for at least a little bit part of the post. Um, you know, they already have usually a script in place. Um, and usually it's gone through many rounds of revisions. And so sometimes there's not a lot of latitude for changes. But if you have a strong opinion or you have you know, suggestions, it's always, you know, good to try to bring those to the table. A lot of times you have already have kind of done that in the kind of treatment process. Um, but then it, it just becomes like making anything else. You know, you have a crew usually of, you know, that are going to help you. Hopefully it's, if it's a bigger budget thing, you have kind of, you know, the typical kind of wardrobe and production design and your DP and, you know, you'll, you a lot of times have to do storyboards to kind of show the client what you're thinking. Um, there's this big thing called the pre-production meeting, which happens usually a day or two before the shoot where you meet with the agency and you meet with the clients. You basically lay out everything. So you show them what, it, what the costumes look like, what the makeup's going to be like, what the music's going to sound like. Maybe, um, you show them the storyboards or you maybe even make like an animatic, like a moving visual of the storyboards. Uh, you go over the shooting schedule, you talk about what it's going to be like, and you basically are just kind of making everyone feel at, at ease and calm and realize that you have it under control. But, you know, the difference is all these elements have to be approved. Like, they have to approve the wardrobe. They have to approve the actors, you know. So it's it's kind of all along the way you have to get approvals. And so that's the only other element that, that commercial directing has that just a little bit other layer of someone always kind of approving what you're doing. But usually if they believe in you and you've won that job, you know, it's them just kind of, checking the box, they're not, you know, getting in your way hopefully too much. Um, on set, a lot of times there's going to be clients, um, either both the agency and the actual clients from that company, which uh, is not always the most fun because, you know, at that point I feel like they, they've already proved this, they trust you, they should really let you go and do that, and it's time for them to basically just watch and make sure everything's going well. Obviously they can from time to time have feedback. Um, but usually just small things or questions or wanting to see something a little different, but it's not, you know, trying to change everything. Of course, there's always that, that time when there's, you know, a bad client that doesn't understand the process and doesn't understand what's gone into this and wants to, you know, feel like they're in charge or interrupt the process, whether it's for their own ego or whether it's just because they don't know what's going on. Um, and that's challenging and it's basically your role to be the communicator. So. You know, with commercials, you're basically less of a director and more of a communicator. I mean, you're basically the person who talks between the clients and the rest of the crew and the actors. And so you have to be able to keep cool and calm. I mean, it's I've definitely had moments where it's been hard to do that, where some client tells you some really stupid, you know, suggestion or just says something. A lot of times they don't censor themselves, you know, because it's they're you're working for them, and so they just say whatever they want and. Usually it's offensive, you know, or <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, and you have to kind of interpret interpret that, and um, <laughs> either figure out a way to try it out or convince them that it's not a good thing to try. So that's definitely that's the most challenging part about making a traditional commercial with clients. Now, of course, um, there's a lot of projects where you don't have that, where either they've come to you and, and had you develop the script with them. Um, or have brought you on early on in the process to refine the visuals. I just did that with a project with Disney where they had a script in place, but I helped to write all the visuals and we worked on it for several months before we shot. And uh, that was great because they really wanted me involved. And uh, when it came time to shooting, the clients were, you know, usually there, but they were very, you know, low key and, and watching because everything had been improved and they kind of trust what we were doing. And um, that's, that's always the most fun too when you can have more freedom to kind of go off there and just tell a story and do your thing. So, um, but that's just the element you're always gonna have to deal with as you make commercials. That it's it's not your film. There's there's always somebody else kind of looking over your shoulder. Um, I think the final thing with post is that I'm talking from the big agency side, the traditional big commercials. Uh, the director might do like a director's cut, but a lot of times you're not even involved in the post process, and that can be tough too. You know when you don't get to even really oversee the editing. Um, a lot of the stuff I do that's still not that big, big time stuff, I am getting to be involved with the editing and 
kind of helping to supervise that. So that's always fun to, to kind of still be involved. But um, you just have to kind of realize that when you get into the commercial world that it's, it's you're getting paid to direct, which is great, but you're not getting paid to make your own film.